Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I want to talk to you about how I increase my workflow efficiency using Adobe Bridge to allow me to process multiple raw files in Adobe Photoshop. Now, this is highly imperative if you're an HDR photographer, and I could explain the process now, but how about we just get into it, and as I get into it, I'll tell you what I'm doing. All right, so within Photoshop, to get to Bridge, you go to File, and go to Browse in Bridge. Now, this will not be available if you don't have Bridge installed, but Bridge is a free download with your Photoshop CS5, 6, CC, uh, whatever, it comes with its own version of Bridge. So when you click Browse in Bridge, it's going to take you into uh, what looks like a, a, a viewer. It's a snapshot of your Explore that you have for what I'm using PC here, and it allows me to see all of the places on my on my computer. It's a little bit different than the, the traditional Explorer that we're used to, but if I go to Libraries here, I can still see all my libraries that I've created. I'm going to go into my Dated Photography, and then this is my typical library that I use to put all of my images into one place. So I'm going to click on this one because I know this one has a lot of images in it. So if you see how I I break down my my work my sets of images I have it broken down by HDR and then the used and then big stoppers so when I take all my pictures I dump all of them into this folder and then as I post process them and tone map them I put them each individually into this folder called the used so when they're in the used that means I've already processed them in my processing software for this it was Photomax so when I go to HDR these are all the images that came from that process that I did for tone mapping. So what I do is I grab multiple images that I know have basically the same type of light going on and the same um, issues. So I'm going to grab all of these four right here and then when I highlight them I'm going to right click and say open in camera raw. So that's going to open all my raw files now in Adobe Camera Raw. If you see a little icon like this, it looks like a circle with two sliders in it. That means that this image already has a sidecar file for it in that folder. These other three do not have a sidecar. So what do I do with my processing in Adobe Camera Raw? Well, it, it really depends. It depends on what I'm trying to, to accomplish. But I know that there are several things that I'm going to do to this photograph right off the bat that I want done to all of them. So when I look at this photograph, it, it is kind of noisy up here in the sky. So I'm going to look at the noise and I'm going to go to noise reduction and just bring that up to like 30 with a luminance detail about 50. I don't really have any tried and true rhyme or reason by the way I do it. I just usually keep my luminance below the luminance detail and that's pretty much all I do for noise reduction. I don't want to reduce the noise so much that it's blurry though. So now what I want to do is I also want to get rid of these chromatic aberrations here. So you see these purple and green chromatic aberrations really bad, especially on the 17 to 40 millimeter lens. So I'm going to go into the lens corrections. I'll actually just set the profile and say enable lens profile corrections because now it knows that this is the Canon 17 to 40 millimeter lens and what it does with that is it, um, if you see a preview here, it just kind of takes the warping that that lens did and fixes it. But what it doesn't fix are the chromatic, ab chromatic aberrations. So now I need to go into color and click remove chromatic aberration. Now usually when you click this once, if you don't have chromatic aberrations that are that bad, just that single click will take away your chromatic aberrations. But sometimes we need to go down to the defringe option here. I'm probably going to do this by two. So if we look at the purple defringe, I can move this over one, two, three, and usually at about three this one looks like it's about good. And then you have your hue amount here. And we change this hue amount, you can see how the fringe changes color as I move this hue amount. So I'll just leave it right about there, it's good. So now with my green, I'm gonna go over to this side because this is the worst port part of my green chromatic aberration. I'm gonna move that up a little bit. And it doesn't look like it's doing much until I get way up into 19 or 20. And it's way too much. So I'm gonna keep it at three, and then I'm gonna change the hue and see if that affects it. So you can see as I move that hue slider over, it does start to affect it, and now it doesn't look nearly as bad. So those are two things I always do with every HDR photograph, and if I did that with every single one, after I just got done batch processing them to, to make my time go faster in 
photomatics. Here I come into Adobe Camera Raw, and if I'm doing that each to each and every single image, even though I know that each one of these images um, re requires it, in Camera Raw, I can just click on that one and then highlight all of them. And with that one that I had selected, I press Synchronize. And then what it's going to do, it's going to ask me, what do you want to synchronize? Well, I want to synchronize everything. The white balance, the exposure, the contrast, everything that I did, I want to synchronize. So I press OK. And you can see it went through real quick, but now all of these have a sidecar adjustment. And all of them now have all the same settings from the image above. So if you end up doing more, so say I go into the curve adjustment, I want to you know, make a slight S curve on here, boost that up a little bit just do something crazy so we can see it on all of them. I want to synchronize all of them again. So it's not going to automatically synchronize them. So I'm going to have to go ahead and click on that one and go all the way through and then press synchronize and then just say okay to everything and it's going to do all that synchronization with that same S curve that we just had on this first initial image. So you can see just how powerful this can be in your processing. Now this is in the tone mapping process, uh, after the tone mapping process has been completed. Sorry. So before you do the tone mapping, if you want to take all your raw files in and remove the noise before you go into Photomatics, you could do it just like this too. Bring all those camera raw files in and then highlight the one do all the, the settings you need to do to it. I would, I would shy away from doing too much on the contrast side before you go into tone mapping. I would really just do all those technical things like the chromatic aberration and the, and the noise. Reduce those on all of like the stack that you have that's going to go into Photomatics. And then you can bring those into Photomatics as TIFF files and you won't have to do any of your noise reduction and chromatic aberration afterwards. You can do it before it goes into Adobe or into Photomatics. Now that's up to the discretion of the HD artist at that point. I myself don't do any of that pre-processing. I just drag and drop the camera raw files right into Photomatics, process them, and then do all the batch processing to the images afterwards like you just saw here. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com and this was how to batch process multiple image files in Camera Raw. So you can see how powerful this was for an HDR photograph. Now imagine if you had a portrait set. You could do the same thing for a portrait set. You could do all of your corrections for a whole portrait series and have everything done and completed. So if you like this tutorial, please do me a favor and comment, share, you know, extend the community to this so that more people can benefit from it as well. I also told you my websites, everydayhdr.com and hdrinsider.com. And if you go to amazon.com and search for Blake Rudis, you'll find all three of my books.